Earlier today, protesters rallied at the Spokane County Courthouse. They're demanding everyone goes back to work now. Good evening and thank you for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Regina on before we get to our top story tonight. We want to get to some breaking news right now. Police are looking for a missing 13 year old in the area of 13500 East Broad, that's in Hilliard neighborhood. Nathan Simpson is about five foot four and 120 pounds. He was last seen wearing a yellow shirt, black coat and pants. If you have any information regarding his disappearance, please call 911. And let's get back to our top story now. Spokane is open now. That was among the signs protesters were holding earlier today. These protests didn't come out of nowhere, though. They were organized. One of the leader organize, organizers, controversial Spokane Valley representative Matt Shea, he's had a longtime conflict with the sheriff of Spokane County, Ozzie Knezovich, who was also at the courthouse today. Krem 2's Casey Decker explains now what that conflict and how it looked out today. At the center of this debate, are its leaders, Matt Shea heading up the protest movement and Ozzy Knezovich leading something of a rebuttal. Shea's coalition ranges from the more traditional libertarians who simply view these restrictions as government overreach to the conspiratorial, anti-vaxxers and the like, who argue without any evidence that public health experts are lying to us about COVID-19. To them and everyone in between, Shea has argued that protests like the one today are the way to convince the government to lift restrictions. We need to reclaim, we need to reclaim our job as Christians to not just preach the gospel, but also to make disciples, which means sometimes we got to stand out here and tell, tell the government and the leaders that are unconstitutionally infringing on us, no, you can't do that anymore. On the other side, we've got Knezovich alongside many other local leaders. And to be clear, these folks are not totally in step with the governor, not even close really. They've been critical of many of his decisions. But they argue the way forward is conversations with the governor and his team, not mass protests that spread anger and potentially coronavirus. They've been pushing instead to work with the state for a fast, phased reopening in eastern Washington. What the governor announced today is draconian. I mean, beyond draconian. It's not, it's not reasonable. I don't see any solution from what Matt just said. A lot of anger, a lot of passion. Amen for the passion. But where's the real solution in his message? And one more important thing to note, despite the tension between these groups and their leaders, the conflict was a peaceful one. No violence and no arrests. In fact, towards the end of the protests, after the speakers were done, a number of people gathered kind of where the sheriff was and had pretty respectful conversations. Reporting from the Spokane County Courthouse, Casey Decker, Crumb 2 News. All right, thank you, Casey. Washington Stay Home Stay Healthy order is set to extend through May 31st. The governor announcing the reopening of the state in a four phase approach. He says phase one would begin in mid May, but there isn't a firm timeline on the next phases. He did say, though, that there would be at least three weeks between each reopening phase. Each phase will require social distancing and continued health precautions. So let's go ahead and break those those phases down for you. Well, here's phase one. Large crowd gatherings will still be banned, but curbside pickup, auto sales, car washes and drive in church services will still be allowed. Phase two, far barber shops and salons will open. Small gatherings of five people or less can return to restaurants and they can open as well with 50% capacity and tables can be seated with no more than five people. On to phase three now gatherings of 50 people or less can resume, including sport activities, restaurants and bars can increase their capacities to 75%. Gyms and theaters can reopen at 50% capacity and libraries, museums and government buildings can reopen. And then finally, here's phase four. The majority of public interactions can resume again, including gatherings of more than 50 people now. However, social distancing measures will still need to be practiced. We are making a shift in strategies. We're moving from the dull instrument of social distancing as our primary weapon against this virus to depending on testing capacity to find people who are uh, affected by this virus and then move to find a way to take care of them and to isolate them. The governor also said that counties with smaller populations and low numbers of cases can explore possibilities of moving to phase two earlier than the rest of the state. Those counties include Jefferson, Lincoln, Ponderé, and several more counties. Spokane, however, was not included in that list.
And earlier today, our Whitney Ward spoke with Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward. She says she will continue to push the governor for a regional approach to reopening the state. Just two weeks ago, the governor was not even willing to talk about a regional opening of our economies. He was set on a one-size-fits-all statewide answer. And now we've been able to convince him that, yes, different parts of the state look different and have had different uh, responses to their COVID plan. Spokane County has been very impactful. We have a population of more than 500,000 people. We have 10 people in the hospital right now, and I hope they get well very, very soon. But our early and proactive COVID response has been extremely proactive. We have plenty of hospital capacity, which is one of the parameters that the governor laid out today on which counties can open up. And we have surge capacity within our medical facilities, too. Uh, our cases have our, our single-digit increases. So we have definitely leveled off. I think we're in a very good position to start opening businesses sooner. All right, now over to the west side of the state. More than 50 people showed up at the federal courthouse in Tacoma to support suing Governor Jay Inslee over his stay-at-home order. County commissioners and others, including candidate Tim Iman, are filing a civil rights violation lawsuit challenging Inslee's order. Protesters are calling it an economic lockdown that is devastating low- and middle-income workers and small businesses. In a statement, those filing the lawsuit warn it's the first of several that will be filed in the next coming days. Meanwhile, across the state line, Idaho is starting to reopen their economy starting today. The state is implementing Governor Brad Little's Phase 1 plan. It's part of his four-step reopening plan. Starting today, places of worship can open. That's if they adhere to strict social distancing, sanitation protocols, and follow guidance from the CDC. Daycare facilities and organized youth activities, including camps, can reopen. In Stage 1, Idahoans are still advised to avoid non-essential travel or gatherings of a 14-day self-quarantine for people entering Idaho continues through the month of May. Gyms, salons, bars, and the dine-in areas of restaurants will remain closed, although takeout, drive through and delivery are still allowed. The Coeur d'Alene Casino is back open after being closed for several weeks due to the coronavirus. The casino held their grand reopening this morning. Since the casino is on tribal land, it's not subject to state law. However, there are some notable changes for the time being. Can I have you pull your hair back for me? That's not a request you hear often when entering a casino or see someone having their temperature taken for that matter. But in the wake of coronavirus, the Coeur d'Alene tribe says they that's what they have to do to make sure everyone entering the casino is safe. Among some other changes, all employees as well as guests are required to wear face masks. Every other slot machine will be turned off and a 24 hour custodial service will be on site. However, the casino has postponed large events through June. The spa and bingo are also shut down as well. Governor Brad Little says he plans to distribute more than $300 million in cash grants to small businesses as the state prepares to reopen tomorrow. Cash grants of up to $10,000 will be available to small businesses. Businesses will be eligible if they have not already received an SPA backed payroll protection loan or received less than $10,000 in such a loan. The criteria and process to apply will be made available online. Applications will be accepted starting May 11th. All you have to do is text Idaho to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a application link. Well, if you filed for unemployment and received a notice that says at adjunctication in progress. You're not alone. This means there's a discrepancy with your unemployment application and a trained a, someone will look at the claim to clear up the problem and that could hold up your claim. Again, my deepest apologies that we haven't been able to provide everyone with the relief that they so deeply need. And we are working night and day to make sure that they get that relief. And the state saw more than 1.4 million new unemployment claims last week. About a third of the 280,000 claims awaiting payments have an issue that requires some sort of follow-up. The Employment Security Department says it's tripled its claim staff and brought on more customer service representatives to handle phone lines.
How about we switch gears now to awesome weather? Well, we did have a beautiful week this week in sunny inland northwest, but meteorologist Thomas Patrick is tracking some changes. So Thomas, what are you looking at for this weekend? Yeah, I can definitely agree. Today was awesome weather for Friday, but tomorrow is a day we're going to have to be weather aware, especially for the afternoon hours. I start with this graphic, the severe weather outlook. First proper severe weather chance for the inland northwest for uh, the this year and it's mainly for some of our southern areas from the Tri Cities to the Lewiston area as well as the Palouse a few severe thunderstorms possible by the afternoon hours. As we look at the big picture, our weather system still just slowly drifting into the West Coast here. A little bit of rain over Seattle and Portland right now, but that will start spitting out some thunderstorms for tomorrow afternoon, especially once we add some morning sunshine into the mix. That's right. If you want to get a chance to get outside, do it in the morning hours. Uh, there's just a small chance for a shower before noon, but Actually, the energy builds during the day and after about four o'clock, I put all the red bars there because that's when our thunderstorm chances really start to take hold for the area. So coming up, going to be timing out as this weather system propagates across the inland northwest and also break down what severe weather factors are going to be the most serious for our area. That in just a few moments.